Big Weed here. Today we review a logger and discuss Julian Assange. Hello and welcome to Beer and Conversation with Pigweed in Crow Hill. Good evening, Crow Hill. Good evening, Pigweed. Uh, what is on your mind? Well, what's on my mind is what's in front of me, which is this incredible tableau of the art from hundreds of episodes that hundreds, we've done. Hundreds. Can you, yeah, can you remind me of what I said when you proposed the idea of doing this show? Yeah, I think you said I got five ideas. Of what? Then what are we going to talk? I, I wrote them down. I'm like, I can think of five things to talk about. And then what? Then what? All and right. we're on like show 435 now or something like that. So, yeah. Okay. And that's not even right. It's more no, than that. that. But the one thing that caught my eye was this panel right here. Ah, uh, yes. Which has a picture of uh, Bradley Manning. Yes. And Julian Assange. I know. And Edward Snowden. Oh, Snowden. That's okay. Sorry. Yeah. But what, what tied them together? I, yeah, we didn't. Really, in that show, we sort of treated them independently as if there were no tie. Yeah, but there is. And yeah. they, they both were connected with WikiLeaks. Yes. I mean, they never met each other, or, but and and uh, but somebody must be responsible for WikiLeaks. Exactly. Well, that's Julian Assange. There we that's go. where I got confused here. So, yes. Yeah, so, uh, Bradley Manning, who now goes by Chelsea, right. and then um, Snowden, both released their documents through WikiLeaks, which considers themselves a publisher they they put this information out there and, we, and I, I don't even know if we mentioned that no i, think I we just treated them independently yeah i don't think we talked about julian assange or wikileaks or any of that kind of stuff so right, it's so overdue we need to talk it about because it, it raises a lot of interesting especially because the whole the julian assange thing has been resolved yeah. after 15 years or whatever so yeah. right Okay, very good. But first, we got to drink a beer. So look at that Crab Town Classic. All right, I love it. It's like a, it's an old uh, Annapolis Harbor look. To it, it is, right? yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, that does look like Annapolis, and good old Crab Town seems like a good name for. Great. Uh, and then it's a Vienna Lager, a which Vienna Lager. which is has an interesting history, which we've talked about in various uh, episodes before. And this one's five point five percent. Vienna Lager is going to be a slightly maltier lager than than you know like an American style lager. Yeah, and I like them. There's yeah, I would say I remember we we you commented that you know if we were if you were on a three day cruise and only had one style, you said <laughs> you'd go with an ESB, which yeah. is a very good choice. I might go Vienna Lager. Might yeah. Even though as much as I love the IPAs and the pale ales, mm -hmm. I can get. IPA to out exactly faster than I can. Yeah, you, know. you drink a few IPAs and you're like, okay, I'm kind of that's, that's I'm great. Kind of done with this. Yeah, uh, this so the so think of a Vienna Lager I, that. Uh, well, so there's the one down from Virginia that uh, that does really well. What's the what's the Devil's brewery? Backbone, Devil's no? Backbone. Right. They make a really good one. And actually, you could you could say Yingling. Yes, Yingling, Yingling. Is, is kind of. So, a, and then there's also there's also some Mexican beers, and there's some history. There's some reason for that, because Vienna lagers were uh, brought over by the Germans to Mexico. All right, now yeah. strange. Uh, very strange. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that's right. That is right on. This is very nice. This is this is like a beer I could drink yeah. all day. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, it's just the right amount of flavor it's not too much it's not punch you in the face right but it's just it's not so light that you uh yeah that you don't realize you're drinking a beer exactly yeah, yeah. you know you're drinking a beer you got that multi flavor and very drinkable good very job nice. there uh jailbreak jailbreak you guys do fantastic work and keep them that. coming i haven't been there lately though. yeah i know we need to go give them a visit do they yeah. have trivia night mm. don't know they had it okay. i know they had it in the past i don't know if they're still doing it Okay, uh, there's a couple of ways to go about that. How about if we just do like a timeline, and then get into uh, the you know the the politics and the morality and yeah. stuff like that. Sure, is that, is that all right? Yeah, so, although I don't have much on the timeline. Yeah, I got a, I, yeah, I got a, I got a little bit. Okay, you know enough to say a thing or two about a thing or two. Um, How about this one? He was born in 1971. There you go. So he's a young in man. Australia. And he uh, took a took a shine to computers yep. at a young age, mm -hmm. and uh, had a little had a edgy 
bent to him and so got into hacking. Apparently his mother was a, was a political agitator. Yeah. 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 Moved around a lot, so, mm-hmm. you know, he wasn't uh, in a stable home, really. Mm-hmm. But uh, Bright Kid took a shine to it all, became very good at hacking. And then, uh, you know, there was a there, – there is and still was a, a community of hackers who will hack just to prove they can do it. Exactly. They're right? not trying because to – Because I can leave a little – just leave a little something behind right. at the NSA on yeah. it. Gotcha. It's like, it's like, face. like breaking into somebody's house and then just leaving a little card. Don't take, don't take anything. <laughs> yeah. just, Eating just their it. ice cream. <laughs> right. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry, I had a cup of your ice cream and here's my card. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like that. That's I mean, right. and, yeah. and there's a long strain of that in the, in the hacking community. And yeah. uh, he got busted. Yeah. And, uh, well, and the, he, the judge found that he hadn't really taken anything <laughs> yes so. he just left a calling card ate yeah. some ice cream and, and, that, and, and that was the but, end of that. i mean but it was no small potatoes it was you know it was like the it's like the defense department or something. <laughs> yes, in exactly. australia yeah right it, right it wasn't the jc penny exactly right? yeah so yeah. It, was, it wasn't breaking into my computer yeah it was breaking it was into something serious potentially right? very dangerous yeah. anyway so he comes out uh, so he served a little bit of time, right? No, or he didn't serve any time. Service. No, didn't serve any okay. time, because the judge said he didn't didn't really do anything of consequence. So he was found guilty, but no no time served. Right. Okay. So, so, but then he he ended up after his whole hacking career, he had somewhat of a libertarian kind of a bent to him. Yes. You know. Uh, you know, information should be free. People should have access to information. Right. Anti-establishment. Yeah. Uh, libertarian trends. Suspicious. And, suspicious of authority. Suspicious of authority. Yeah. You know, maybe they shouldn't be controlling all information. Right. And that free speechy, very free speechy, and that's when he starts working on the precursor to WikiLeaks, which, as I understand. Yeah, the technology. The, the technology. Like if you if you submit something to somewhere, there's a paper trail, right? They know you send somebody an email in the yeah. simplest sense. Mm-hmm. But even if they have a website where you can you can drop documents here, yeah, well, it goes right back to you. Yeah. So he they, de- they designed a site that yes. was like distributed across multiple different servers and things, so that it was much harder to track. That even the the editors of WikiLinks don't know the origin of, and what that did was gave people the confidence mm-hmm. that they could rat out their bosses or. So it's basically it's basically like a, a repository for yeah. whistleblowers. Yeah, yeah. That's the idea. Anyway, and so I don't know. It, it wasn't getting that much traction until uh, that until it started ex- they, the exposing Iraq things. War, right? Well, before that, though, there were exposing the corruption of dictators. Okay, and you know that doesn't get the that doesn't really get the attention of of the, the FBI. Of, right, yes, right. it's like all right, CIA, you know, or, right? Yeah. You you expose some corporation for. You know, lying about the effectiveness of its product. Or, right. You know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, that's all, that's and, all and most people, most people are okay. Good. You know, you're you're telling us that, despite what they're telling us, cigarettes are actually bad for you. you know? <laughs> yes. Right. Internal memos and yeah. company. Yes. They're yes. hiding something. Ba 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 ba. Uh, but that's a well trod path. But in, we in then in 2010, then we hear about uh, Mr. Assange in. In the name of Mr. Manning. Yes. Right? So Manning was a private who found some things that he thought needed to be surfaced, submitted them to WikiLeaks, and that that information came out. And it was things like, uh, you know, this Apache helicopter was attacking this collection of people who some of them were bad guys, but some of them were journalists. You know, so. Yeah. It was kind of exposed, trying to uh, be a little more transparent about what's actually going on. Because th- what the Pentagon tells you is going on in the war is not what's going on in the war. I mean, that's right. that's been obvious for right. and, decades. And, and, all right, well, uh, oh, no, hold on. Oh, oh. I'll, 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 I'll reserve commentary until we get through the 
So, yeah, if, if I could, can I just talk about Chelsea Manning? Sure. Quick? So, yeah. <laughs> at least six, th- including the documents I have printed out in front of me mm-hmm. and the videos I've seen, mm-hmm. all but one referred to private Chelsea Manning. But, one, he wasn't, but he wasn't a Chelsea back then. One said private Bradley Manning who now goes by Chelsea. Yeah. I'm like, that's fair enough. I mean, right. like, can we just call reality what it is? Yeah. Anyway, I always try, do they, I do they, do they extend that? Do they extend that to anybody else? Like, if, if today I decide to change my name from Crow Hill to uh, Raven Hill, are, are they are they then going to just say back in twenty fifteen Raven Hill was? The, no, they're not going to do that. No, because that's what your name was back then. Like, like. When Prince changed his name to whatever, well, he to was Prince punk, when he right. was. Re- 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 <laughs> <laughs> right. hey, anyway, sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, it's, it's troublesome. How- anyway, it's so the uh, U.S. intelligence service was no longer turning a blind eye when there was a data dump mm-hmm. of information about America's conduct in Afghanistan and Iraq. Right now, it may have WikiLeaks may have concealed the source. It doesn't mean that the army couldn't figure out wh- who who downloaded the information. Right, and they did. And so, anyway, Mr. Assange was uh, accused of conspiring to break into military databases to acquire sensitive information, and was charged with eighteen offenses. Yeah, but so here's here's his defense. He didn't do any breaking into anything. No, he just made a place where a whistleblower in the Defense Department or in the intelligence agencies could put that information. All right. And so, is this a coincidence? Or, uh, I'm going to try to reserve commentary. Okay. <laughs> Let's just get to the, to the timeline. Okay. Then he is in, because Sweden's laws are more pro-journalist, that's where the server was. Mm-hmm. And so he's in Sweden, that's where WikiLeaks is based. And... He gets accused of uh, some sexual crime, some or sexual other. crime right. or other. So he leaves. He leaves Sweden, goes to England. They try to extradite him, and he goes into a what, he goes Ecuadorian he goes Ecuador who agrees. He sa- he says this is all BS and a ploy to get me to America, yeah. where I could potentially face a treasonous uh, execution. Right. right. So Ecuador agrees and gives him. Uh, What's the word? They they allow him to stay in the Ecuadorian yeah, embassy. Yeah, he's got, uh, you know, diplomatic immunity in the, <laughs> and this really kind of a small embassy in the corner of London. And the police surround the place 24 hours a day for three years, mm-hmm. thinking the minute that guy walks out, we got him. Right. And he doesn't walk out. He stays in this and little And he doesn't embassy. walk out for four more years. Yeah, well, what kind of a life Jeez. would that be? It's just a, I mean, it's... If you and they bug the place and they fill sure. it with cameras yeah. and everything, and he's paranoid as heck, appropriately. Mm. But was it just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they're not out to get you, That's right? right? Yeah. So he's both of those things, and uh, the, he's. <laughs> it's fair. It's, it's a room. It's a, it's a it's 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 a kitchen, a little bathroom, and a little sitting room. And he didn't even dare open the curtains. Yeah. So he's sitting in darkness for seven years. They. Uh, Ecuador changes presidents, who's kind of had it with him, yeah. and really care anymore. And uh, so, with, hold on, then, then, then you get so, to, to, asylum someplace else, right? That was the word I was looking for before. Asylum. Uh, asylum. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, no, he 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 was tried for something in England, and then when he goes to the Ecuadorian embassy he has now violated the terms of his bail ah so when he gets kicked out of there they say all right you're sentenced to 50 months in jail Mm -hmm. which turns out to be 23 hour uh, solitary confinement wow and he does his he, he and he does his 50 weeks then the Swedish prosecution drops the whole rape investigation, which makes you wonder if it was ever anything anyway. Yeah, you don't know. Uh, they rule that he cannot be extradited to, this is 2021, cannot be extradited to the U.S. because he is likely to kill himself under the harsh U.S. prison conditions. Um, 
2021. It's really, it's really hard to believe, of course, that if the U.S. government was after somebody, that they, it's really hard to believe that they would trump up some other kind of charge like rape or something like that against them. I mean, why would you ever believe something like that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> why would they ever do something like that? I know. That? that never happens. Nothing no. like that ever happens. No, there's no way yeah. that they would manufacture a Manufacture crime. a crime never happens. No. Never. So, where's it? They, oh, the, the, so 2022, Britain's government orders the extradition of Assange to the United States. Assange appeals. Mm -hmm. I mean, all right, commentary. Uh, so the Australian Prime Minister says Assange should be re released and, quote, nothing is served by his ongoing incarceration. Right. Well, well, you know. High Court rules that Assange cannot appeal his extradition. Now, now we're in February 2024. Lawyers finally launch a bid to stop his extradition. Two courts reveal that Assange, uh, that, that Assange can, mount a, can mount a new appeal based on arguments about whether he received free speech protections or be disadvantaged because he is not a U.S. citizen. So this goes on and on. And so now, June, so just last month, June 2024, the U.S. Justice Department says in a letter filed in court under a deal with the agency, Assange plans to plead guilty to one act of espionage and is uh, be sentenced to time served. That he the fifty a lot of time served. Yeah, a lot of time and, served. Uh, so it's all over. He, yeah, he's now he's in Australia. Okay. Yeah, okay, so, so what the crazy of, long of, story here. Yes, crazy, crazy story. I mean, gosh, the suffering. He looked terrible when he came out of that place, but I mean, seven years in a room and then followed by another four years in solitary confinement. Yeah. It's a su surprising the guy survived at all. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, but the real I always, question. I, I, only, I only realized just while looking into this that he wasn't Swedish. I was just like, his business is in Sweden. He was being extradited back to Sweden, when I'm thinking back to Sweden means back to his home country. And he's blonde. And yes, and he's super blonde, yeah. and he looks Nordic. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so he's Australian. So, 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 the question is, hero or villain? Exactly. And it's a hard, it's a hard call, because you can see both sides of this. Um, on the one hand, if the, the government lies to us that's become so obvious in the past four or five years that no, nobody with a brain can possibly deny that the government lies to us yes so what is the remedy for that yeah and supposedly the remedy for that is a free press yeah and that's what julian assange, julian assange is claiming that he is a publisher and he's relying on the first amendment and the free press to be able to expose Things that the government's doing in our name uh, that we don't, don't necessarily want the government to do. Like, just let's take an example. Let's say the government has told us that they're prosecuting this war against these bad guys. And they're doing, they're, they're, the, they're the paladins, they're the good guys, they're the knights in shining armor. And they're acting, you know, totally according to the law and everything else. And the other guys are orcs and they're terrible and they're doing all this horrible stuff. But it turns out that maybe our guys aren't doing all this lovely, uh, amazing knight in shining armor stuff, that they're doing some bad stuff. Right. Now, how does that come out? Right. Where so does could, that come out? Right. And so I guess the argument would be, look, war is ugly and war is messy. And when you expose these very rare accidental moments, you undermine our ability to perform the greater good thing that mm -hmm. we are trying to do. Yes. Right? I mean, exactly. I, I, can understand, like I can completely understand that. But from the other point of view, yeah. here I am a citizen. I'm paying my taxes. I'm supporting the government doing things in my name mm -hmm. that I might not agree with. And the government's lying to me about it. Yeah. All right. So, what, 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 so let's ask two questions here. Mm -hmm. Aren't companies and governments entitled to have secrets? Mm -hmm. And aren't consumers and citizens have a right to expect transparency. Well, so, right? so you get these two things going on at the same time. This is not easy stuff here. No, it's not. So does the government have a right to have secrets? Well, in a democracy, I mean, we're not a democracy. We're a democratic republic. But 
in a government of the people, by the people, and for the people, I mean, is, are, is aren't we supposed to know what's going on? But you mean by but by no? Do you mean you should know who our spies are that are in operating exactly. in another country? Exactly. It's, it's not, not. It's not the, a, the back channels that are taking place during these negotiations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what's going on? So you've got this face to face thing, but yeah. you mean all of that stuff is supposed is, is immediate public knowledge? Right. So obviously, the government has to have some amount of secrecy. Obviously. However, where's the line? Where, where, where do you stop it? Like, if the government, the government, you can't say the government can have some secrecy, therefore the government has everything secret. Yeah. There has to be, there has to be a place where, sorry, this has to come out. Right. Now, where or, is that line? And who, and who draws that line? And, and with the, or, or with the company, right? So you've got, you've got trade secrets. You've got negotiations that are going on that are going to affect our, our, our investment in this other company, right? right? I mean, this yeah, is all yeah. very private stuff. This yes. is nobody else's business. Yeah. But what if there are internal memos that our product is harming the public? Yes. And then somebody, some whistleblower says, uh, I don't want to lose my job here, but somebody needs to know this product isn't as safe as they're saying. Yes. And so they have WikiLeaks to you know to expose the, that to, information to expose yes. that information and that is the role of the press and assange is right in this respect the role of the press is to expose this kind of stuff right. is to be able to say you know they're telling you this is what's going on but here's what's really going on and they all have not with the degree of security and safety that wikileaks has mm -hmm. but they have channels for people to anonymously write. I mean, there's there, there's the there's the crime <laughs> crime stoppers hotline, right? Yeah. We're calling in anonymous tips. The press has that too. Wiki Julian Assange would say that's all I'm doing. Right. Yes. However. However. The other side of it is <laughs> he's so he's, many sides. He's revealing this information that's exposing U.S. assets to danger. Like for example. In the Iraq war, some of the things that were exposed showed some of the Afghanis who were bravely and heroically providing U.S. information. Right. And those people got exposed by some of this release. And then those guys got, went and got shot. The Taliban went out and shot them because they're like, oh, you're cooperating with the U.S.? You're dead. Right. So if you're – now, if, 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 if WikiLeaks – is turning over those documents mm -hmm. to a to journalists yeah. and saying you do all the I can't I can't redact ten thousand pages of right. that's, this is this is your job yeah. all I'm doing is providing the information but if it's just laying out there for anybody to get their hands on that's another question that's right. another question like right? yeah. you're saying I, I, you do the redacting yeah so right so one one level of this would be some whistleblower finds some information that he thinks ought to be public yeah uploads it to wikileaks and that's just available for the public that would be one level another level would be wait a minute there really has to be some scrutiny and some some professional has to look at this right so i'm gonna that's what the press is for so i'm gonna give this to the new york times or to somebody and they're gonna look into it and decide what should or should not be revealed right so the those those are two different kind of levels of exposure i i heard a term referred to as radical transparency yeah it, it's almost like there are people who have li libertarian tendencies mm -hmm. and then there's the 100 percent libertarian yeah just wants everything over. who just right. says look if you want to shoot heroin you know what is what all day long anywhere you want that is not the government's business yeah and so he's kind of in that He's more he's like on the free, libertarian he's like free, side. He's like yes. Free speech till the end of tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So without let's, recognizing sort of a journalistic, or I don't know, or humanitarian. Uh, but let's take the perspective just for the moment of somebody who's trying to prosecute a war in Iraq. Yeah. And you've got spies. Yes. You've got you've, you've got, got informants assets. All you've got day informants. Long. You've got you've got secret plans. You've got things that you're you're doing against the enemy. You've got so many things that you need to keep secret. And do we want some hacker 
getting that information and exposing it, which is going to cause people to die. Yeah. Which is going to, you undermine know, the undermine, the, undermine our effort. It's going to do it. So the answer to that is, well, no, we don't want that. But isn't there a line? Isn't there a point right. where the lies are so bad or the corruption right. is so bad where something needs to be exposed? Yes. But I think, I don't know if this is... Uh, the easy way out or or his moral position or whatever to go i this question that we're arguing here is like yeah. i'm not arguing that, that yeah question. exactly his, his it's position, kind of, i mean it's kind of it's at least consistent right? yeah exactly his position is that's really not my my thing <laughs> yeah my, I'm, I'm, I'm just providing I'm a, a means yeah i'm just providing a means for this information to get out somebody else can deal with all those difficult questions yeah so yeah. um Yeah, the, the 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 journalist sorts out what is journalistically permissible. So I I don't he call himself I don't know a, a, a publisher and information go between. Yeah, it's kind of hard to I, say I, what a publisher journalist, is. Journalist journalist isn't really the right word. I mean, he's he's no. because he's not sifting through the information. No. No, he's, he calls himself a publisher. And publisher is a hard word to define these days uh, because it's it's you know, okay, you have a website or you a publisher, you know, right? Right. Are you responsible for everything that goes on that for every And if it's a platform, if goes... other people post things. So there's, there's a lot of gray areas in the whole question of who's a publisher. Now, about this, about the 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 video that made him made WikiLeaks household name. I, what the collateral I heard, murder video, that one? Yes, collateral yeah. murder video. Yeah. And so what I hear is... An Apache helicopter killing citizens, mm -hmm. which it turns out is exactly what happened. Including two Reuters journalists. Right. Yep. However, when you watch it, these guys are doing their best to identify targets mm -hmm. and they terribly misidentify. So it sounds like uh, uh, guys in a hel helicopter saw a bunch of citizens at a fruit stand and decided to murder them all. Yeah, it wasn't that at all. No, it wasn't that. No. So the Reuters guys are carrying these gigantic cameras mm -hmm. that the guy identifies because that's an RPG. Mm -hmm. And he runs up by the other guy, then runs no. it up the, up the chain of command and says, I'm telling you, these... And I can't tell. Yeah. And, and so... Uh, this is a guy who's been doing this for a while, and so when he sees that, you know, unless there's no sense that he's making this up so that he can murder civilians. Yeah. But, uh, but, but how about but why? It, so this is this is uh, 14 years ago. Did the did the army not have the c capability of high res cameras? The camera the. All of these cameras are so grainy and so yeah. crappy. It's like you, you get information from Mars from 20 years ago that is clearer than these cameras are. So, yeah, he you couldn't really identify what these guys are. So, so let me let me uh, put it in a different context. Yeah, hey. I just finished watching Band of Brothers again. Ah. And a great, great Good. show. And imagine that you have a journalist who goes undercover and is – like gets himself into Hitler's secret hangout. Yeah. Okay. And he's there. He's a journalist, but he's in there trying to find out information about Hitler and the SS and this, that, and the other thing. And the U.S. finds out, that, hey, Hitler's in this place. And they bomb it. And they kill Hitler and they kill that journalist. Right. Now, a shame. Too bad. I mean, that's sad. But... Weren't they justified in trying to wipe out Hitler? So what this this thing about the the helicopter goes in and shoots a bunch of people, and there were a couple of journalists in there. there there's a couple of ways to think about that. It's like, do we have to be absolutely one hundred percent sure in every single military action that we take that we're only going to kill bad guys? All right. That that's a ridiculous standard. Right. You can't possibly right. apply that. Kind I mean, there of were no bad guys in this situation. Oh, weren't some of them? Uh, I thought some of them were no, 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 no. The the the, the RPG and AK forty seven that they identified was was were were uh, journalist camera equipment. Hmm. 
Okay, so, so then the I other, mean, but but it was a, so but it was it was a horrible mistake, not an intentional shooting of of uh, civilians. Uh, of civilians. Okay. So they're identifying what are what, and if you're and if and you guys are all chit chatting and buddy buddy with the guys who have RPGs yeah. and AK forty sevens, which actually weren't. It is perfectly reasonable to assume. Now you could say. So you, you you could say, wow, yes, we need to reevaluate uh, how we establish. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it, it was a terrible, it, it, yes, it, it was very bad. Um, but it wasn't but. intentional. So let, let me tell you a funny story. Long time ago, back when Gorbachev was in power, yeah. I was working downtown. And for a very silly reason, I had a Uzi-style water gun. It was just a water gun. Yeah. Okay. It was a it was a, a battery powered water gun, and it was but it looked like an Uzi. All right, and we did some silly thing at work, and I, I had this thing down there. Now let's say that in a fit of stupidity, I had that thing with me as you what, strolled past the White House. No, as <laughs> as Gorbachev, you know, because Gorbach, oh, okay. right. Gorbachev was actually in D.C. at this time. Okay, all right, okay. all right. I guess so you. let's say I'm leaving work, and I have this water gun Uzi in my in my jacket, right? And I'm walking along and Gorbachev is there and just because I'm stupid or they something. Kinda, right, be, right. It was before TikTok videos, but something similar. Like, yes. Take my picture. <laughs> right. So <laughs> it, it becomes obvious that I have this thing that looks like an Uzi in my jacket oh, and the Secret Service takes me out. Yeah. Now, obviously, I wasn't intending perfectly any Perfectly innocent man. <laughs> yes, perfectly innocent man killed. Okay, so... Yes, that's a horrible mistake, but, eh, you know, I mean, what else are you going to do? You see some guy with it looks what looks like an Uzi in his jacket. So. All right. And if there's a guy on the roof pointing a gun at a ex-president and potential new president. Well, just wait a little while. Yeah, let's just, let's just wait. Just until, until we're really just certain. You wait a couple minutes. You don't want to be, you know, jump the gun here. No, no, no we don't. Let's let him shoot first. and then <laughs> Yeah, we'll... we'll return fire if necessary. <laughs> we'll return fire. Oh, jeez. Right. Uh, so is, sorry, as, with a history as a hacker. Mm-hmm. Does WikiLeaks hack? Or no, no, they, they don't. Just... They don't. They're, they, what they've done is they've created this infrastructure where other people can upload information to their, okay. to their thing. Right. But I'm they're not sure doing not any the, hacking. I'm not in the, in the, in the hacking business. No. Because in a, in a way, because I was thinking so that my earlier example of the, co the, the company that has a harmful product, would it be different? What's the difference between... A disgruntled, uh, nervous employee uploading and WikiLeaks hacking in and getting that information. Yeah. Yeah. Would would you say that they had made some gross violation by hacking in to find the dirty deeds of this? Yeah, it might uh, be a difficult question. I'm I'm not sure how that would come out legally. Like, what what is an analogy to that? Can you think of a situation where I'm not breaking into your bank to steal money? But an employee at your bank brings some money out to me. Yeah. You know? Uh, is, yeah. Is that a yeah, legit yeah, that, distinction? It, it, uh, yeah, it is. And uh, I, think it hold, I think it holds up. It's sort of like, uh, like, like a, a legitimate warrant issue. Yeah. You know, like yeah. you, if you, if you have, which it's, I don't know. I, I'm not. <laughs> this is this is a little off topic, but I do want to talk about it. So, so your warrant says you're allowed to go in to search for weed and guns, right? And then you go in and you find child porn, right? But it's not covered under the warrant. Yeah. Uh, I guess I guess what everybody has to stand around till somebody runs out and gets the judge Another to warrant? issue a new, a, a new warrant because. Yeah. You came across something that, uh, all right, that's not really, that's not really the topic. So. You asked a question. So the question, so uh, uh, I, I, I saw this little assessment here. It says, to his supporters, Assange is a courageous whistleblower and defender of free speech. Right. To his critics, he is a reckless cyber terrorist with little regard for the consequences of his actions. Yeah. So when you see people out there, free Julian Assange. Free and the and the things that I've seen are, are, are international journalists all over going. 
you you got to support this guy in the yeah. name of journalism. Right. So, so you who, asked you asked the question. I did. Who who loves oh, Julian Assange? Oh yes. And who hates Julian Assange? Correct. So I kind of came up with a list. So Thanks. who loves him? Transparency and free speech advocates, right? Okay. Because if you're if you're like a, a First Amendment absolutist and you think the government should be transparent in everything that they're doing, then obviously more open information is better. Anti-war acts ac- activists, yeah, because, okay, because you're showing the horror of war and all that kind of stuff. Whistleblower supporters, okay, yeah, they, I mean, they would all, they all seem like pretty good guys. Yes, so so those were the people who would love him. Now the people who would hate him. Uh, intelligence agencies, yeah, right, because they're in the business of yeah. lying for a living, right, and keeping things job. secret. This is what we do. How about uh, political figures and diplomats? Because they're in the same sort of business of, you know, when when we send a diplomat over to some place and they have this negotiation, that's not public information. That's secret private stuff. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're right. Where you and then WikiLeaks exposes what hotel room he's staying in and what his uh, personal hours are. Right. And, right? Yeah. and then how about this? The people who are harmed by having their information released. So here you are. You're some guy working on some project in Afghanistan and you've been exposed by right. Julian Assange, yeah. and you're, now some Taliban right. comes you're, up and shoots you in the head. Right, you're a, you're a NGO, yeah, uh, low level employee doing nothing but humanitarian work. Right. However, really, you're providing intel. Yes. That, and and it gets exposed by Assange, and now they come kill you. Well, that seems like that's kind of villainous. Yes. So it's a it's a really hard question. On the one hand, if we're going to have you know, if, if our votes matter, if, if it's government of the people, by the people, for the people, we should know a lot of things, right? <laughs> On the other hand, governments have to have secrets. It just, ha- they you have know, to. And g- generally, we come to the, pr- the precise and proper conclusion at telling everybody exactly how they should feel and think on every topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We do, having... do that all the, we're always telling everybody how to think. Yeah. <laughs> I'm having a tough time here. No, I, I, it's, there's, there are difficult issues here. And the question, the question might be, did he go too far? But the, but the basic concept of Having some transparency right. and and getting information out in the open, well, you have to agree with that. And th- yes, and then and then you're just stuck. You're you're, you're stuck with how far is too far, yes. and who gets to decide that, and where where and... where's the line, and who decides, and everything else. Yes, and that's a very difficult thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Well, Julian, I, I think I I, th- I think you've suffered enough. I think seven years in an uh, Ecuadorian embassy and fifty months. In a in solitary confinement, but at, the, the entire time WikiLeaks has been active and yeah, but okay, I agree with that. But if he exposes some information that gets uh, Captain Crowhill in trouble, I personally will kill him. Oh well, there you have that. He did follow two children that he'd never seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Embassy. Swedish woman. That's why I thought he was Swedish. Yeah, I know. Uh, but, yeah. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a really hard line to draw. I like the idea of the public having information. But I recognize there have to be secrets. So, you know, it's, it's hard. And we know for certain that the government lies to us. Yeah, and corporations lie. And corporations lie to us, yeah. All so right, I, don't well, have, Julian, I don't have a clear answer. Uh, you know, I guess, you know, I'm glad you're back in Australia and yeah. doing what you get to see your kids and all. And, but this, th- there's a, there's a feel, I wanted to do this because there's a feeling that the saga is over. Eh, probably yeah. not though. Right. I mean, I, I don't, I, do, you, do, you, do you sense some real repentance on no. this part? I mean, you no. wouldn't, you wouldn't have the, the, the fortitude to stick it out for this, for this long. Right. If you didn't believe in what you're doing to the end yeah but you know but then again there's still there's still very uh very talented uh military assets out there who exactly who could, that, that, that really yeah. don't want you to do this. he could trip over something and fall down a flight of stairs yeah, he, yeah <laughs> that's right and that imagine you're imagine you're one of those guys you're one of these you know spy dudes 
and you find out that it's because of Julian Assange that your best buddy in yeah. your spy outfit got right. killed. You, right. You got you got exposed and just happened to get out of the country in time. Yeah. Uh, because thanks, of this guy. Thanks, Julian. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks so much for listening to Beer and Conversation with Pigweed and Crowhill. Remember to visit us at pigweedandcrowhill.com or send us an email at pigweedshow at gmail.com. 